Our romance won't end on a sorrowful note. So by tomorrow you're gone. The song is ended, but as the songwriter wrote, the melody lingers on. They may take you from me. I'll miss your fond caress. But though they take you from me, I'll still possess the way you wear your hat, the way you sip your tea, the memory of... Pale Fire, a poem in four cantos by Vladimir Nabokov. Canto One. I was a shadow of the waxwing slain by the false azure in the window pane. I was a smudge of ashen flood, and I the lived on flew on in the reflected sky. And from the inside too I duplicate myself, my lamp, an apple on a plate, uncurtaining the night. I'd let dark glass hang all the furniture above the grass. And how delightful when a fall of snow covered my glimpse of lawn and reached up so as to make chair and bed exactly stand upon that snow, uh, in that crystal land. Retake the falling snow, each drifting flake, shapeless and slow, Unsteady and opaque, a dull dark white against the day's pale white, and abstract larches in the neutral light, and then the gradual and dual blue as night unites the viewer and the view. And in the morning, diamonds of frost express amazement. Who spurred feet of cross from left to right, the blank page in the row? Reading from left to right in winter's code. A dot, an arrow pointing back, repeat, and dot, arrow pointing back. A pheasant's feet, torquated beauty, sublimated grouse, finding your china right behind my house. Was he a Sherlock Holmes, the fellow whose tracks pointed back when he reversed his shoes? All colors made me happy, even gray. My eyes were such that literally they took photographs. Whenever I'd permit, or with a silent shiver, order it. Whatever my field of vision dwelt, an indoor scene, hickory leaves, the spelt stilettos of a frozen still side, was printed on my eyelids and other side. Where would tarry for an hour or two? And while this lasted, all I had to do was close my eyes to reproduce the leaves. Or indoor scene, or trophies of the years. I cannot understand why from the lake I could make out our front porch when I'd take Lake Road to school. Whilst now, although no tree has intervened, I look but fail to see even the roof. Maybe some quirk in space has caused a fold of furrow to displace the fragile vista. The frame house between Goldsworth and Wordsmith on its square of green. Ah, 
I had a favorite young check up there. With ample dark jade leaves and black spare vermiculated trunk. The setting sun browns the black bark, around which, like undone garlands, the shadows of the foliage fell. It is now stout and rough, it has done well. White butterflies turn lavender as they pass through its shade, or gently seems to sway. The phantom of my little daughter's swing. The house itself is much the same. One wing we've had revamped. There's a solarium. There's a picture window flanked with fancy chairs. TV's huge paper clip now shines instead of the stivane so often visited by the naive the gauzy mockingbird, retelling all the programs she had heard, switching from chippo chippo to a clear twee twee, then rasping out, come here, come here, come here, flirting her tail aloft, or gracefully indulging in a soft upward hop flop, then instantly twee. Returning to her perch, the new TV. I was an infant when my parents died. They both were ornithologists. I've tried so often to evoke them that today. I have a thousand parents. Sadly, they dissolve in their own virtues and receive. But certain words change words I hear or read, such as bad heart, always to him refer, and cancer of the pancreas, to her. A preterist, one who collects cold nests. Here is my bedroom, now reserved for guests. Here, tucked away by the Canadian maid, I listen to the buzz downstairs and pray for everybody. To be always well. Uncles and aunts, the maid, her niece Adele, who'd seen the Pope, people in books, and God. I was brought up by dear bizarre Aunt Maud. A poet and a painter with a taste for realistic objects interlaced with grotesque growths and images of doom. She lived to hear the next babe cry. Her room we've kept intact. Its trivia create a still life in her style. A paperweight of convex glass enclosing a lagoon. The verse book opened at the index. Moon, moonrise, more, more. The forlorn guitar, the human skull, and from the local star, Curio, Red Sox beat Yanks five to four on Chapman's Homer, thumbtack to the door. My God died young, theology I found degrading, and its premises unsound. No free man needs a God, but was I free? How fully I felt nature glued to me. 
and how my childish palate loved the taste. Half fish, half honey of that golden paste. My picture book was at an early age, the painted parchment paper in our cage. Mauve rings around the moon, blood orange sun, twin iris, and that rare phenomenon, the aerodule. When beautiful and strange, in a bright sky above a mountain range, one opal cloudlet in an oval form reflects the rainbow of a thunderstorm that in a distant valley has been staged. For we are most artistically caged. And there's the wall of sound, the nightly wall raised by a trillion crickets in the fall. Impenetrable. Halfway up the hill, I'd pause and throb their delirious trill. That's Dr. Sutton's light. That's the great bear. A thousand years ago, five minutes were equal to 40 ounces of fine sand. Outstare the stars, infinite foretime and infinite aftertime above your head. They close like giant wings and you are dead. The regular vulgarian, I dare say, is happier. He sees a Milky Way. Only when making water. Then is now, I walked at my own risk. Whipped by the bow, tripped by the stump. Asthmatic, lame, and fat. I never bounced a ball or swung a bat. I was a shadow of the wax wing slain by feigned remoteness in the window pane. I had a brain, five senses, one unique. But otherwise, there was a cloudish freak. In sleeping dreams, I played with other chaps. But really envied nothing save, perhaps, the miracle of a lemniscate left upon what sand by nonchalantly does. Bicycle tires. A thread of subtle pain tugged at by playful death released again. But always present ran to me. One day when I just turned eleven as I lay prone on the floor and watched a clockwork toy, a tin wheelbarrow pushed by a tin boy, by a pasture lays and stray beneath the bed. There was a sudden sunburst in my head, and then black night. That blackness was sublime. I felt distributed through space and time. One foot upon a mountaintop, one hand under the pebbles of a panting strand. One eye in Italy, one ear in Spain. And chase my blood, and then the stars my brain. There were dark throbs of my triassic, green optical spots in upper Pleistocene. An icy shiver down my age of stone. And all tomorrow's in my funny bone. During one winter every afternoon, I'd sink into that momentary swoon. And then it ceased. Its memory grew dim. My health improved. I even learned to swim. But like a little lad forced by a ranch, with his pure tongue or her abject thirst to quench, I was corrupted, terrified. Alert. And old Dr. Colt pronounced me cured of what he said were mainly a growing pain. 
the wonder lingers. <laughs> Shame, Rene.